Hello, and welcome to another video. Today, I will be unboxing a secret layer. I have here a 30th anniversary countdown kit, which I'm very excited to break into and share with you today. I will not be reading every single card like I normally do, because there are just so many in this secret layer, um, a lot more than normal. I'll just be opening up all of the individual packs and enjoying the cards inside. I've done my best to avoid too many spoilers for this one. I have seen a list of the cards that are in here, but as far as how the cards are going to look will mostly be a surprise to me. I did see the seven or so cards that they previewed when the secret layer was announced, and then I accidentally saw a couple more just by way of following artists on social media. And when the secret layer went on sale, some of them posted the art that they had contributed. So, yeah, I did see a couple of those, but everything else will be a surprise to me, and I'm really excited to dive in. Let's get started. Cheers to another 30 years. And they know me so well. Let's be honest, you're gonna open all of these at once. Oh, cool. So we have a little or large D30 spin down die. Very cool. And a great looking secret layer box. I really like the hollow foil with a kind of confetti look to it. How will you hang your boosters? Fibblethip has some ideas. So, since this secret layer is meant to kind of be like an advent calendar, looks like Fibblethip is suggesting maybe we can string them up over our fireplace. We could hang them on a cactus. We could maybe attach one to our cat's collar. Or make an outfit. Very cute. Oh yeah. And then we have a list here of every magic set. When did I start? Looks like I started playing right around here. Which is wild. I still feel like I haven't been playing that long, but that's like in the middle of the list. And I know sets come out 
quite a bit more frequently than they used to, so it's not quite in the middle, but wow. All right, so we have all of our packs here. Looks like they're going to be in order already, so I think I'll just leave them in this box and we can start going through one by one. So, I think I've mentioned this before, but I have a hard time with these packs that only have like one or two cards in them. I always feel like I'm just going to destroy the card that's inside when I'm trying to open a pack. So, I've got some scissors to use. And of course, the opaque packs also kind of freak me out. Like with box toppers and whatnot. I don't mind the clear ones where you can see the card inside, but these ones just make me nervous. We'll see, maybe I'll get a little more comfortable as we get through the video, but I'm sure these first few packs are going to be a little anxiety-inducing for me. <laughs> Alright, 1993. And it's a foil right off the bat. We have a nice Shivan dragon. This is one that I did see ahead of time. Um, because I do follow Justine Jones, but I was really stoked to see this card and uh, really meets expectations. It looks beautiful. I forgot to mention that I think it's a 30% chance that any of these packs could be foil. All right. On to 1994. Oh, interesting. So we have Mishra's Factory, illustrated by Dexter. It's this really cool pixel art style. Um, yeah, this looks just stunning. I love it. That's awesome. Let's go 1995. I assume they're using the packaging to sort of mimic the sets that were going on in this time frame. Looks pretty cool. So this is one of the ones that we saw as a teaser when the secret layer was announced. We have 
Necropotence. Illustrated by Too Many Skulls. Which is awesome. Yeah, I suppose there are a lot of skulls on here. Especially when you consider the casting cost. But yeah, this looks great. On to 1996. Ah, oh, so cool. So we have Limduel's Vault, illustrated by Wizard of Barge, which I think I'm on record as saying is one of my favorite artists. I actually have the Prime Slime secret layer just sitting off to the side here that I still need to open for you. Just waiting for the right time. But, um... Yeah, this looks awesome. All right, let's move on to 1997. Alright, and we have another foil. It is Trade Wind Rider. Really beautiful colors. Really delicate and interesting take on a spirit. I really like this. Good job, Brooklyn Snobs. Let's move on to 1998. Whoa, look at this. We have a smokestack. Looks like this is illustrated by Jamie Zuverza. This is like very cool, very surreal with these huge eyeballs on a flaming smokestack. Big red sun in the back there. Maybe some human remains there. Pretty freaky. Let's move on to 1999. Oh, yeah. So we have Squee Goblin Nabob. Kind of goofy looking, but looks like he has a necklace made out of teeth, so perhaps still formidable. I like the soft appearance and yeah, beautiful looking work. Looks like it's by Nana Key. I'm sure I'm pronouncing incorrectly, but apologies. All right, 
onto Y2K. Oh, nice. We have Lynn Civy, Defiant Hero, illustrated by Alba BG. Looks like she's a rebel tutor, which love to see it. That's very cool. Moving on to 2001. Oh yeah, we have a wild mongrel. This one is by Crocodile Jackson. And um, if you're a fan of this style of art, I did his entire secret layer in a video a couple months ago, so maybe check that out. But yeah, this looks great. Very simple. Very silly looking and great colors and such a wonderful card. Love it. All right, so let's round out the first decade on to 2002. Yeah, so Genesis. All right, so one of the uh, incarnations illustrated by Michael Hutter. It's cool looking. Like a centaur with a little dragonfly. That's awesome. All right, so the first 10 years are down. On to 2003. Oh, wow. So we have a Chrome Mox, iconic artifact style by Dan Frazier. This is really, really beautiful. This is another one that they had previewed when the secret layer first was announced. And honestly, I was hoping to get this one in foil because I think that would just look absolutely stunning, but... You know, it looks great, as is, so yeah, still happy to have this one. On to 2004, and I'm pretty sure this is when I actually played my very first game of Magic, if you could call it that. I wasn't really a Magic player, I was just at an LGS with some friends, and... One of them, like, gave me their deck and was like, oh, you gotta play. And I really had no idea what was going on the entire time, but still played nonetheless. Um, and all I remember is that deck had bottle gnomes in it, and I was so enamored with them. I thought they were so cute. So funny. I wish I remembered more. I really wish I knew 
what deck I was playing, although it was probably just someone's pile that they put together. <laughs> but who knows? I, I don't know. Anyway. Ooh. So we have a very nice looking glimpse of nature illustrated by Jungshan. Looks like it could be on like a tapestry or something. That looks so cool. This is lovely. And uh, maybe I could put this one to use somewhere. On to 2005. Oh my god, wow. This looks so cool. We have a foil lightning helix by Martin Ontiveros. It's wonderful that this is in foil as well. This is absolutely stunning. I don't know about you though, but I can't just read lightning helix without hearing Randy Bueller in my head just absolutely shouting, It's Lightning Helix! <sighs> Cracks me up. Leave a comment if you know what I'm talking about. Or look it up, because it's worth it. Okay. <laughs> anyway, on to 2006. Ooh, incredible. We've got Bogarden Hellkite, illustrated by God Machine. This is also just stunning. All the art that we've seen so far is just nonstop hits. Man, I bet that one looks amazing in foil as well. And I love that the text box kind of gives it the whole thing is just kind of like this monochromatic red vibe. I guess there's some pink, more purpley pink in the background, but no, this just looks so cool. Let's see what 2007 has for us. What? This is incredible. So we have Ponder with like this giant eyeball crying tears with mermaids in them that are wearing little crop tops and looking totally badass. Maybe even a callback to that merfolk Ponder art. Illustrated by Lauren Y.S. Who also did art in the Pride Secret Layer that I opened, which is very cool. I love the colors. This is just so amazing. On to 2008. Alright, Heritage Druid. Classic elf here. 
really awesome art style by Rovina Kai. I love that it's like a muted palette, but still really brings out these little glowing spirits. Very lovely. On to 2009. Alright, so we've got a Blood Braid Elf, another elf, but this one decidedly more vibrant than the last. Very, very cool looking. Illustrated by Edge. Wonderful work. I'm not sure totally what's going on. Whatever it is looks quite magical. Everything looks so great so far, it's like hard to believe we still have even more to go. Let's move on to 2010. Sun Titan by Justin and Alexis Hernandez. Definitely have memories of Sun Titan heading up the uh, Heroes deck in Heroes vs. Monsters, which is one of the first products I really remember playing when I started Magic. So yeah, nice to see him again. Very cool. I'm not sure what to call this style. Almost looks watercolory, but a little bit stained glassy. Wonderful. On to 2011. Oh my god, I almost don't want to touch this thing. It looks so creepy. We have Birthing Pod. A card that's always kind of freaked me out. But definitely more freaky. Thanks to Wooden Cyclops' illustration. Although I should have expected this. Um, this was also previewed when the secret layer was announced, so I knew it was coming, but really makes me uneasy. <laughs> Ugh, I have to put it down. <laughs> I remember sort of like my first exposure to modern watching the uh, birthing pod deck get played. I was still pretty new to magic overall, and yeah, I had never really seen a thing that gets a creature into play quite like this before, so I thought it was cool, but definitely unfair, and um, yeah, that art was creepy also, and this one extra is. I do like it, to be clear. So yeah, let's move on to 2012. Really getting the Return to Ravnica vibes here from this vibrant 
blue pack. Oh yeah, death rate shaman. In foil even. Wow, this looks amazing. Art is by Mark Riddick. This is such a cool style. And that shaman just looks absolutely wild. Wow, this is so, so cool. I just have to admire it for a second. I remember this card being a problem, for sure. It's maybe a little oppressive in Legacy, was it? Alright, so that rounds out the second decade. We are on to the final stretch here with 2013. Definitely getting Theros vibes here. So we have a retro frame, Elsbeth, Sun's Champion, illustrated by Rebecca Gay. This is incredible. I remember seeing this art, but I would have never guessed that this was Elsbeth. Oh my god, and it's all written out in the old style that was never really meant to have planeswalkers on it. So it's got that super tiny text. What a wild idea to kind of style shift cards like this. Yeah, this just looks incredible. This is so cool. Rest in peace. Or no, she's back, right? She went to New Capenna. <laughs> All right. 2014. One of my favorite sets, Cons of Tarkir. Oh. <laughs> it's Seedrino. Of course. Yeah. Not too excited to see this card in particular, although the art does look incredible. Very psychedelic art here. <laughs> Great job, Cat Dirty. It's just a very chill guy taking his rhino on a ride. Looks like one of those black light posters with like the black and the neon colors. Um, so yeah, this card was certainly obnoxious. I did not play it myself, though maybe I should have. I think I was playing Jeskai Aggro in Standard at this time. So yeah, this thing was definitely tough to deal with, with such high toughness and all that life gain. But anyway, very cool looking card. Oh, wow. So speaking of Jeskai, we have a stunning rendition of Dragon Lord Ojitai by Yuko Shimizu. This art is just beautiful. It's so intricate. What a wonderful looking dragon. I absolutely would have loved to play this back in the day. All right, 2016. Oh. Gonna have to go into this one from the bottom.
Whoa. We have a foil, Thalia Heretic Cathar by Rosemary Valero O'Connell. I love how this foiling treatment really makes her stand out against the clouds in the background. Again, just like really intricate line work. Oh, and the blade of the sword is also highlighted. It doesn't appear to be any wind, judging by the tree or the horse, but her hair just kind of has like this life of its own. That is so, so cool. All right, 2017. So we've got Nicole Bolas, God Pharaoh, illustrated by Uta Natsume, and uh, looks like this is maybe the Lil Walker style, where they're like little jibby characters. I opened that secret layer but haven't published that video yet, um, but will at some point. But yeah, that's a cool style to repeat, I think. Definitely makes him look very menacing. Alright, what do we have in 2018? Arclight Phoenix by Danny Pendergast. Very annoying card. Actually, no, I played this card. I think I hated this card, but then I ended up playing it and it was actually really, really fun. I had like a mono red just popping off a bunch of spells and then getting this guy back. Again, very, very beautiful art. I bet this looks even better in foil. Like, I can imagine this little starburst up here being highlighted by that foiling treatment. Very sort of ethereal look to this guy. Not quite corporeal, doesn't seem. Alright, the end is in sight. Let's jump on to 2019. Yes, I remember seeing this one for Emery Lurker of the Lock by Brandy Milne. This one was also spoiled. This one is so creepy. This is another one that frightens me on a deep level. The art is wonderful. I do, again, for the record, I, I do really like it. Um, but it is very unsettling. It creeps me out. Uh, I don't like how skeletal she looks, but still somehow has hair and ears and stuff. But I think it fits the theme so well. I think Brandy really knocked this one out of the park, and it's probably a good thing that it inspires fear so deeply inside of me. Great work. Twenty twenty. What was even going on? What significant cards were there? Shark Typhoon. 
Wow, this was 2020? I thought this card was older than that, but I... I don't know. I don't remember time, I guess. This is such a cool way of doing it. Like, well done, Edgar Sanchez Hidalgo. This one was also spoiled early on, so I was very much looking forward to this one. Such an interesting and unique take on laying out the card information. I really love things that sort of challenge the layout and break the typical format. Such creativity putting this on like an old school VHS tape. One of these like campy disaster movies. Because I think that is so fitting for the Shark Typhoon theme. Yeah, wonderful work. Would love to see more stuff like this. All right, on to 2021. So we have an Elite Spellbinder by Alexis Zurit. This is amazing. Looks like he jumped right out of a comic book page. Great use of color. I think that's so cool. Very unique style for a magic card. Um, really stands out in the lineup here. Wonderful. All right, and then finally we have 2022. Oh, and they gave us little hang tags in case we wanted to hang up these packs. Guess we won't be doing that. Oh, so I assume that's our bonus card. <laughs> Whoops. I didn't think about that. I guess I didn't realize this one would have a bonus card in it. But, okay, we'll save that. We have Nashi, Moon Sage's Scion. Illustrated by Death Burger. Love the name. Absolutely love the art. This looks so cool. Very fitting for Kamigawa. Um, in the Neon Dynasty era. He's got a little cheeseburger. Oh my god. That is absolutely so cute. I cannot handle this. <laughs> He's got his little soldering iron, tinkering away. Looks like he could fit right into an anime. Wonderful work. I love it. And then we have a foil lotus field, which is just stunning. Illustrated by Sayuk. Very sort of a dark, moody color theme with these like metal spires sticking up around the lotus. But yeah, very cool. I love it. All right, and that is everything. Thank you so much for sticking with me through this whole video. It took us quite a while to get through everything. I'm glad I didn't slow down and read every single card because this would have been an incredibly long video, I think. 
But anyway, let's talk in the comments. Were there any cards here that really stood out or resonated for you? Do you have any that you would consider picking up as a single for um, a deck of yours or a cube? Anything like that? Or just a have? Are there any artists that you like to collect? Do you have any fond memories of any of these from throughout Magic's history? I would love to hear about it. But anyway, thank you so much for sticking with me throughout this video. I hope you have a wonderful day.